rather than like from a purely theoretical standpoint, which I could do, um, I think it makes more sense just to think about this function, which is not that unusual a function in most ways, and notice that it sort of pushes on the boundaries of what we know about calculus and forces us to think about, like to introduce new language into um, differentiation and all that kind of thing, okay? So, y equals the cube root of x. Now, the cube root of a number is different to the square root of a number, okay? Because when you think about, let's just come over here. We were just laboring the point that the square root of x, right, and the square of x are not exactly opposites to each other, right? They're not exactly opposites. Because when you square something, you lose its sign. And then when you take the square root, the sign doesn't just magically reappear, okay? So these two are not exactly matched up, okay? Let's just think about this visually for a second. And maybe you just want to do a very small sketch on the side of this. If we put these on a couple of um, sets of axes here, okay? Y equals x squared, we've done this one to death. Okay, there's y equals x squared, our, our familiar old parabola. Well, what happens with the square root of x is that you get something like a parabola, but you only get half of it. Okay. There we go. Yes? Okay, so if I wanted to get this bottom part down here, then that, well, let's just actually put these equations on, shall we? Uh, what I've just drawn is y equals the square root of x. Okay? What would correspond to it on the bottom would be y equals the negative square root of x. Okay? Which is why if you get given an equation like okay, x squared equals 25, okay, there are in fact two solutions to this, right? And they are the plus and minus square root of 25, which of course is 5. Okay? So you can get both solutions if you're squaring. But if you're taking the square root, you're only getting the one half. We are defining that as the positive side. But something more interesting, perhaps more useful, happens when you think about a cube root. Okay? Because take any real number you like, right? Let's go back to um, let's go back to our example of five. Okay? If I do the cube root of five cubed, okay, well five cubed is 125. This is after you take the cube root, you come back to five. Okay? But if you take the cube root of the cube of negative five. Think about what happens, okay? So this in here is minus five times minus five times minus five, which is? Minus 125. There are three negatives in there, right? So two of them cancel, leave one behind, okay? Now what this means is, once I clean up my radical sign, is what's the number that if you multiply it by itself three times, will give you negative 125. Negative and that is, five. unambiguously, that is negative 5. So you do get back the same shape, okay? Or the same number, I should say. Now, since you get the same number here, you're getting exactly the same shape over here, rather than just half of it, okay? So now, draw me two sets of axes. We are familiar with what the cube of x looks like, right? Um, on the right hand side, for x is greater than 0, it's just like x squared but steeper, right? Like that. But because the cube of a negative number is also negative, right, that's why you're getting this kind of shape down here, okay? Uh, it's an odd function because it has an odd power, of course. So in order to get our shape of x cubed, translated, worked out into what the cube root of x looks like, okay? Just think about this guy. Think about this. In order to make sure we get everything oriented correctly, okay, what you're really doing is you're reflecting this shape. I ignore this part over here. I get rid of it. Okay. And if I reflect it across this line, y equals x, okay? Turn your head 45 degrees, so you're looking up that way, and you flip it across and you get this shape, the square root of x. Okay? I want to do exactly the same thing, but with this. I don't need to cut out half of it because the negatives are all fine. Okay? And when I do that, here's the shape I get. Are you happy with that? Have a think about if I now put my <coughs> y equals x line through there, you turn your head, and then you reflect the whole thing. Okay? You're going to get, oops, you see that part? Okay, and then over here, you get that part. Okay. Is it applicable to 
to anything that has like a power of an odd number, like a square root of an odd number. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. In fact, more or less, I mean, just like um, x to the 4 and x to the 6 and x to the 8 will look like steeper and flatter versions of this, right? The, um, the higher odd powers, assuming I don't add any like other roots in there or stuff like that, if it passes through the origin like so, um, will just look like this, except steeper and, and more boxy, okay? So you can do the same kind of transformation. And so, would you lose marks for that graph that you choose the green one? Because this one here? Yes, I would. Yes, which is a really important point. Now, let's come come over to that. When I did my cube of x, okay, we see, just like with the, um, the square of x, okay, it slows down right here and it's literally, you can work out, we now have the tools to work out the gradient at the origin, right? Now, of course, dy and dx in this case is 2x. 2x, so therefore when x equals 0, your gradient is also 0, flat line, okay? Your gradient here, your gradient function, I should say, will be... 3x squared, so again at the origin, you're getting zero. Does that make sense? So, a horizontal tangent. Now have a look at this guy, okay? Because everything, all the x and y's have been swapped, as it were, okay? What used to be a horizontal tangent... Is a vertical tangent. Is a vertical tangent, exactly right. In fact, it's, it's the y-axis, right? It's the y-axis. But this is a bit weird. This is a bit strange, because think about, like you've just told me by... <laughs> This is what four units is say by inspection, okay? So you've got a vertical tangent there. How would we normally go about finding the equation of a tangent? What's our normal process? If I say I've got a curve, I want the equation of a tangent at a particular point, what will we do? <coughs> We're gonna need to differentiate and then do point gradient and get an equation of a line out. Let's give it a shot, let's see what happens. Let's, let's give it a go, let's give it a go. Okay. So y equals cube root of x, What's a nice, neat way to write that so differentiating is easy? X to the power of a third. Okay. So when I work out my derivative, it's just the power law. Yeah. So my power is going to come out the front, come to the coefficient, and then what happens to the power? X to the power of negative Very good. <coughs> we subtracted one. We went through first principles to show that you could do this with fractional stuff as well. Okay. Now, this, because there's a negative in the indice, in the index, right? What does that mean about the whole thing? It goes to the bottom. Yeah, it's on the denominator, right? So this is really 1 on 3x to the 2 thirds, okay? So this is a problem for us because at 0, 0, which is where I was interested in, the origin, I passed through there, right? But at 0, 0, what's the derivative equal to? The derivative is undefined. In fact, that's what I would write. d1, dx is undefined. It's not infinity. It's not infinity. 1 over 0 is not infinity. It, it doesn't have a value, right? You can't put any number on it and then do maths on it that's coherent. It breaks all the rules, okay? Including infinity. So it's undefined and that shouldn't be surprising because as you told me before, the tangent is a vertical line. What's the gradient of a vertical line? It's undefined because it doesn't have a run. There's no run on the denominator, right? So therefore you can't divide. So what can we say about this thing? This graph here, okay, um, the cube root of x, is continuous um, at 0, 0, right? There's no breaks in the curve. It's nice and smooth. I don't have to pick up my pen. But it's not, you can't find a derivative, right? You can't differentiate and evaluate at that point. So what we say is, it's not differentiable. You can't differentiate it at that point. Of course you can differentiate in a whole bunch of other points, right? In fact, every other point. Just that one. That's the problem, okay? Um, vertical tangents give you this issue, 